Hello friends. Welcome today to the next session of the discussion of the theory questions for your upcoming DNB exam. Today, again, we are going to discuss three questions on spine. So this was a question that was asked in December 2020, wherein the uh, first part of the question was discuss the Dennis three column stability in spinal injuries and describe the pathoanatomy of flexion rotation injuries in the lumbar spine. Since it's two questions, generally it should be divided equally, but many a times the examiners take the liberty of them dividing it on their own if it is not given over here. So the Dennis's three column system, when it was initially designed, it had a significant amount of clinical relevance for the people because it was very much easy and convenient to decide what are the three columns and what does uh, what does uh, the, the theory or the hypothesis had to say. However, over time it was seen that it was only moderate and reliable in determining whether the injury is stable or not. So in the Dennis's three column injury, the column, three columns were divided, that is the spine as a whole was divided in three columns, anterior column, middle column and posterior column. So the part of the anterior column were the anterior longitudinal ligament, the anterior two-third of the vertebral body, and the annulus. So remember, my friends, these are the three structures that form the anterior column of as per the Dennis's classification system. Similarly, the middle column comprised of the posterior longitudinal ligament right over here, and along with that, the posterior one-third of the vertebral body and the annulus. So this part is the posterior part, and this part is the anterior part. And the, similarly, the posterior column, the one that is shown in blue over here, is the posterior column of the Dennis's theory, wherein the pedicles, the facet joints, the ligamentum flavum over here, this is the ligamentum flavum, these are the articular processes over here, this is the lamina, the pedicle over here, the spinous process, and the PLC or the posterior ligamentous complex, these basically form the posterior column. Going to it again, number one over here is the ligamentum flavum or the yellow ligament which is there. Number two is the interspinous ligament. Number three is the facetal capsule over here, which lies over the facet. See over here, the facet is denuded. Generally, the capsule is present over it, which is the capsule. And number four is the supraspinous ligament, which is present over here. So these are the four ligamentous parts of the posterior ligamentous complex right over here. Apart from that, the spinous process over here, the pedicles, the lamina, they also come as a part of the posterior column. So remember to draw this diagram also in the exam because this is how you're going to score better. So instability as per the Dennis was defined basically when there is an injury to the middle column. So whenever there will be an injury to the middle column, it will be anterior plus middle column or basically posterior plus middle column. So basically what was said was if two columns out of three are injured, that means the injury is not stable. Similarly, the other ways in which you can see what is instability is or you can predict whether the injury is stable or not is if there is an evidence of widening of the interpedicular distance on the AP X-rays, that also gives us an idea that the injury is unstable. Loss of height of posterior cortex of the vertebral body on the X-ray, on the lateral X-ray will also give you an idea that the middle column is involved. That means the injury is possibly unstable. Disruption of the PLC complex along with anterior and middle column involvement that also would be defined as instability. So these are different criteria with which we can uh, decide and define whether the injury is stable or not. Now, flexion rotation injuries. Uh, one other important thing going back to Dennis is that please remember to mention the limitation that is it is moderately reliable in determining the clinical degree of stability. Also, the other thing is that the fracture morphology was never discussed with Dennis's theory. What type of fracture, whether it will be stable or it may be not stable. So these are significant amount of limitations. Of number third limitation is that with Dennis's theory, we cannot decide what type of management should be done. So that is also important. Whether you know you are going to do a conservative or a surgical management. If you are going out with surgery, what type of surgery should be done? That is also not mentioned. So please mention this as a limitation. Flexion rotation injuries, injuries are the translation rotation injuries to the spine, which are very severe injuries and they are characterized by horizontal displacement or rotation of one of the vertebral bodies over the other. So in the plane, we will see there is a significant displacement that happens, be it in the coronal plane or the AP plane, the column will be just rotated around and it will be translated. So this is a three column injury and they are flexion rotation injuries. These injuries generally result from torsional and shear forces when there is a torsion that is a rotation element and a shear force that is how the displacement happens. This injuries are, these type of injuries are severe and generally involve the PLC complex or the posterior ligamentous complex. So these injuries should be managed surgically 
and the aim is to get the column back in place in a single line so that at least the patient is able to sit or possible to able to be able to stand with support even if there is no power in the lower limbs these injuries are characterized by unilateral or bilateral post or dislocated facets so once there is a three column injury the faceted joints are going to give away vertebral body subluxation translation and or rotation so these are multiple components of this injury because all these injuries are three dimensional injuries translation injuries are best in on the lateral lateral radiograph that is you know once you have the lateral x ray done you will see the column is completely moved like this the upper part of the column and the lower part of the column there may be no contact between the two and it may be laying like this on the lateral x ray the translation image or the injury is best seen on the lateral radiographs or the sagittal ct or mri images so similarly apart from the uh, x rays you may also see the same thing on the sagittal cts or mr while the medial lateral instability is seen on the coronal images so when we see from the front when we see there is a horizontal displacement or in the coronal plane this would be seen in the coronal images when we see the images from the front so medial laterally when there is a instability or there is a displacement that would be seen on the coronal images and the translation which is best seen on the sagittal images or the images that are run from the side posterior ligamentous complex injuries generally the evidence for that is that there is a splaying of spinous processes and widening of interspinous space going back to this image in this area over here the interspinous space would be suddenly increased as compared to the interspinous spaces above and below the injury that will give us an idea that there is a plc injury as well apart from that aversion fractures of superior inferior aspects of the contiguous spinous processes also if there is a spinous process fracture that also gives a clear idea that there is an component of plc injury apart from that other common additional findings would be transverse process fractures and rib fractures so all this will give us an idea that there is a severe translation rotation type of injury that is involved now what are the risk factors since they have axis of five marks you have to add more points so the risk factors generally are high velocity injuries motor vehicular accidents are the most common falls from height sports and violence or uh, uh, you know gun arm injuries so that will also give you this type of injuries so according to ao these type of injuries are ao type 3 injuries so also make it a point to mention that in your theory so the etiology depends on the pathophysiology on the mechanism of injury where acceleration deceleration injury so as the mechanism of injury as we spoke about there's a torsional element involved and along with the torsional element remember that there is a shear element will be involved so with a torsion there will be a rotation element and with a shear the column will completely give away so this is the type of injury that happens acceleration deceleration injuries primarily in high velocity motor vehicular accidents it results in hyperflexion rotation and the shearing of vertebral column so the hyperflexion as a person is sitting there will be hyperflexion there will be a rotation and the column is sheared away completely so this is a movement in which there is a forward hyperflexion there would be a rotation and a shearing with this you will have a three column injury involving the rotational component as well generally the associated injuries are these patients are always having most commonly neurological deficits they also may be having head injuries concomitant injuries in the thoracic and abdominal uh, injuries may also be present so it is very much important to evaluate these patients in the emergency vitally as soon as possible because when there is a, a type c or the this type of injuries flexion rotation injuries in the upper part of the spine that is in the dorsal spine or in uh, the thoracic spine that is when generally these patients are thoracic trauma as well and these patients may have to undergo a icd insertion as soon as possible because many a times these patients have a very big hemothorax there so lumbar thoracic junction is the most common area of spine where you incur these type of injuries between t10 to l2 areas now primarily why is it so because this is a transitional area between thoracic spine there is a kyphosis in the thoracic spine and the lordosis in the lumbar spine hence it is a very high stress zone greater mobility in the lumbar spine as compared to thoracic spine as we know lumbar spine is way more mobile as compared to thoracic spine thoracic spine is less mobile for the basically the reason of the articulation with the rib cage that is the reason why in this transitional area the stresses are very much high this results in an area of spine that is vulnerable to the shearing forces shearing forces are basically the forces that cause three column injuries high risk of injury to the spinal cord corners or cord like minor depending on the patient's anatomy and degree of dislocation so these are the injuries with which you also make develop significant amount of deficit and also cord like minor syndrome or corners medullaris syndrome that depends on the patient's anatomy and the degree where the injury is incurred